Well, a policeman's lot certainly is a happy one in Buxton this week. It's pretty good if you're a Nanky Poo, a Little Buttercup, or a Pirate King too. Join us all for a Songs of Praise, Gilbert and Sullivan style. gardens in front of the Opera House here in Buxton are basking in Derbyshire sunshine which is great news for all the hundreds of enthusiasts who've made their way here from all over Great Britain and beyond to be here at the fourth International Gilbert and Sullivan Festival. Now even though Gilbert and Sullivan were writing more than a hundred years ago everyone who's here today really loves singing their music. But did you know that apart from writing operas, Sir Arthur Sullivan also turned his hand to writing his own songs of praise, hymns that are popular enough for us still to be singing them today. But let's begin our programme by putting some of the magic moments that we've captured from this first week of the festival alongside the magic music of Gilbert and Sullivan. <laughs> Two from churches round about. Now we're all in the very capable hands of our man with the baton, Paul Leddington Wright, who uh, tells me he's got something rather special up his sleeve for us later on in the programme. But the music will be great because the Sellers Engineering Band are here from Huddersfield and they're ready to lead the way with our first hymn, one that we all know so well. But did you know that Sir Arthur Sullivan wrote the music for Onward Christian Soldiers? <laughs>
Dunfern. We're here in Buxton this weekend. I wonder what they'd make of this festival. They were, of course, a bit of an institution in their own right in Victorian times, and their work is appreciated more than ever nowadays by the two and a half thousand or so Gilbert and Sullivan groups up and down the country rehearsing in church halls all year round. Now, the highlight of the year for a few select companies is to come here during the festival and be invited to perform on the stage of the famous Buxton Opera House for just one night. It's the most beautiful, beautiful building. It has a very heart of its own. We have a super team of staff, and I absolutely love working here. Why a Gilbert and Sullivan Festival in Buxton? Well, the organisers came to see me. They were looking for a beautiful theatre. I realised I was onto a very good thing. I shut the door, they signed on the dotted line, and I wouldn't let them go till they did. And it's really taken off. It's one of the most wonderful things that happens here every year. Ably hard you played your part You have carried from conviction To my hesitating heart Ring the merry bells on board ship Friend the air with warbling wild For the union of his lordship With the humble captain's child For a humble captain's daughter For a gallant captain's daughter And the lord who rules the water And a tar who blows the water let the air with joy be laden, ring the songs the air above, for the union of the lordship with the man who always stood I've been involved in GNS since I was um, a baby, really. I, I believe I was weaned on GNS. I started coming to see the shows when I was four years old. And in fact, I sat next to my husband <laughs> in the theatre. I didn't know he was my husband when I was four, obviously, but uh, we were both brought up on it. And we both joined the society when we were 15 years old, straight from Rose Hill Sunday School. Most of the members of the opera company at that time were from the Methodist Church, Rose Hill Methodist Church. And of course, Methodists do love to sing. <laughs> Every mental law, the, law. the statements, facts, and vanity. We play to rank before, before. the wisest of humanity. I normally play the part of the Paterman, which is the tongue twister role. But the only problem with uh, performing here at Buxton is that you've got an audience of 800 who are total GNS buffs. So any word that you say wrong, they know, because they probably know it better than you anyway. Right, we do it again. Let's see if we get to the Once end, more with please. feeling, come on. The Christian base of the society is still there and still very strong. We are a church, a very close uh, family. People do tend to care for others and are concerned about what's affecting other people. Uh, this is Captain Fitz Battleaxe of the First Lifeguards, the original upper-class English twit. <laughs> Normally, I'm dressed as an Anglican priest. I'm you know, amongst all these Methodists, but I'm, I'm actually an Anglican vicar by day. I've been impressed by the way in which all ages have actually come together. And we've got people within the society from about 15, 16, right through to 70 plus, all working together, all having fun. Not that the church is into entertainment, but the sense of uh, the church being a group which should be of all ages, working and worshiping together, praising God, serving the community. Uh, we could have a lot to learn, actually.
The singability of Arthur Sullivan's music is just beautiful. Whether it's hymns or whether it's his operas, they're all instantly accessible and singable. From every kind of man obedience I expect. I'm the emperor of Japan. And I'm his daughter-in-law elect. He'll marry his son, he's only got one, to his daughter-in-law elect. My models have been declared particularly correct. But they're nothing at all compared with those of his daughter-in-law elect. Bow, bow to his daughter-in-law elect. Bow, bow, bow to his daughter-in-law elect. How's the week, Pam? <laughs> Actually, I'm steaming nicely, I have to say. Mind you, you can hardly talk with a hat like that. Do you mind if I take it off? I think that's a very good idea. What are you doing here this week, Michael? Well, I'm singing the Mikado, in the Mikado, in the professional company that's attached to the festival seats. Don't mind if I just do this. Because <laughs> you know all about being a professional. You were with the Doily Cart for some years, weren't yes, you? Yes, I was with the Doily Cart for nine years. And the company was um, the exclusive one for all the Gilbert and Sullivan's operas. So uh, that's where I got into the show business end of it. <laughs> show business isn't renowned as a place for hanging on to your Christian principles, is it? No, very difficult hanging on to Christian principles when you're away from home such a lot and when you're away from your church or, or from your mother church. I mean, if it hadn't have been for church I, um, singing as a boy, I wouldn't have been here. And I sang as a boy in St. Werberg's Church in Derby. That's where my voice was trained by the choir master there. And that has followed me all the way through. And in the 19, early 1980s, I, I joined the Derby Cathedral Choir and uh, began to sing there again. And that's where I've always been happiest. I've always been happiest singing within the church confines. And do you include religious pieces in your concert tours? Yes. Um, mainly my concerts uh, contain one song, which is Arthur Sullivan's Lost Chord. Wherever I go, I take that with me because it's such a beautiful tune and beautiful words and that final line it may be that only in heaven I shall hear that grand amen.
old 78 records. You don't see many of those nowadays, do you? You do if you look in my study. There are about 1,300 on shelves, all of the music of Sir Arthur Sullivan. Good gracious. Well, that must mean that he wrote a great deal more than just the operas that we can see here. He certainly did. He's best known for the 13 operas, 14 if you count the lost one, that he wrote with W.S. Gilbert. In addition to which, he did another 10 operas, 10 or a dozen major works for choir and orchestra, a symphony, a cello concerto, nearly a hundred hymns, nearly a hundred parlour songs, and even a couple of ballets, including a special event to commemorate the Diamond Jubilee of Queen Victoria in 1897. And what do you think of his hymns? Well, the best thing about his hymns is that they're singable. Sullivan knew what he was doing. People can get into it and have a damn good sing. And the other thing that this sort of music must do, it must illuminate the words. And in all Sullivan's best hymns, that happens. Have you a favourite? After On with Christian Soldiers, it's probably Lead Kindly Light. And it's the only setting of these words which really does illuminate them. And the words speak to me now through this setting in a way that they never had before. On the count of three, Brawl is down here, Benchmen, go. It doesn't matter. The productions that we've done in the past have been very different than the traditional ones. Your MCs assist me, all of you. I mean, you're young and you want to do something that is not like everybody else. You want to be different. This year, our production is The Mikado. We've modernised it. We've we turned it into an industrial concept rather than the traditional Japanese shuffling around concept. I thought the children would uh, appreciate that a little more. We are in an industrial area, so we set it in the sort of 1980s. We, we've mentioned some of the Japanese firms that uh, came into this country and took over because it's very much about power. Right, gentlemen, can we just get one thing sorted? Remember, we talked about part of our arts. community well, is well, about commitment, the commitment to faith, the commitment to one another, commitment to other people, and this group here is a very committed group. I think it was the suggestion of manliness that's upset them. <laughs> I've learned more discipline, and I've learned to work in a team, and I've really enjoyed All it. I've been here is umbrellas clicking. I think going on stage is. It gives you a lot more confidence, and that's good outside of school as well. I will be absolutely petrified. I will be prized on stage with a crowbar. But um, I think it'll all be worth it in the end, because when the audience starts applauding at the end, you know you've done well. My object goes sublime, I shall achieve. Well, the gentleman who's on the stage with me now needs no introduction to this crowd today because he was one of the star performers in the heyday of the Doily Car Opera Company, which specialised in Gilbert and Sullivan. John Reed. 
<laughs> you were well known as being a patter man. Did you ever come a cropper with all those words and keeping yes, your I teeth in? I did. And that was the nightmare song, which really and truly is a nightmare song. It goes very fast, starts here and finishes here, without a breath hardly. And I got to the part when you say, and you dream you are crossing the channel and tossing about in the steamer from Harwich, which is something between. But I couldn't find the which, and I said and. The and took me back. So it sounded like, and you dream you are crossing the channel and tossing about in the steamer from Harwich, and you dream you are crossing the channel and tossing about in the steamer from Harwich, and you dream you are crossing the channel and tossing about. <laughs> Well, you get your words wrong here and they all know and they'll help you out <laughs> which is what we might need to do for hms pinafore we're going to hear now from the first lord of the admiralty john reed <laughs> When I was a lad, I served a term as office boy to an attorney's firm. I cleaned the windows and I swept the floor, and I polished up the handle of the big front door. I polished up that handle so carefully that now I am the ruler of the Queen's Navy. Boy, I made sure to mark that they gave me the post of a junior clerk. I served the rich with the smiles of land, and I copied all the letters in a big round hand. I copied all the letters in a hand so free that now I am the ruler of the Queen's Navy. Of legal knowledge, I acquired such a grip that they took me into the partnership. And that junior partnership, I ween, was the only ship I ever had seen. Was the only ship ever seen. But that kind of ship so suited me that now I am the ruler of the Queen's Navy. I grew so rich that I was sent by a pocket borough into Parliament. I always voted to my party's call, and I never thought of thinking for myself at all. I thought so little they rewarded me by making me the ruler of the Queen's Navy. Now, landsmen all, whoever you may be, if you want to rise to the top of the tree, if your soul is unfettered to an office stool, be careful to be guided by this golden rule. Be careful to be guided by this golden rule. Stick close to your desks and never go to sea. And you all may be rulers of the Queen's Navy. Stick close to your desks and never go to sea. This is the same society, or essentially the same group of people, will turn around and, and perform GNS one week, and they might be singing in church the following week. But when I'm trying to encourage people to sing and sing well, well, the music in GNS helps, and um, Sullivan's music sparkles. But the strength of feeling within it is what I'm also trying to get within the church. Church services and the theatre all use the same elements. The same atmosphere is created by the use of colour, architecture, good music. Uh, good writing, uh, oratory, all these elements are in both. And it's wonderful when you can see that spirit within people that they are performing with you and through you to try and make something magical. And when it works, it's a beautiful feeling in the church just as much as on the stage. Well, I was just about to introduce one of the musical highlights of our program today, a medley of the best love tunes of Gilbert and Sullivan. But I've just discovered what it was that Paul Eddington might head up his sleeve for is a pair of thigh length boots. <laughs> you look a bit like <laughs> it's like Captain Hook, I think. <laughs> Captain Hook? I am the pirate king. <laughs> well, I hope that somewhere about that cosy you've got a baton concealed, have you? <laughs> well, we promised you a medley, and here it is.
Yeah. What do your fellow students think of you being involved with Gilbert and Sullivan? Some of them think it's a bit sad. <laughs> <laughs> but once you manage to drag them to the show, they usually enjoy it. It's a lot of fun. It's a marvellous group of people. And what's really important to me is, is that God is in everything we do. And when we're doing theatre, music, whatever, it's a way of giving something back that we've been given talents to use for the enjoyment of ourselves and for others. Isn't it difficult to, to think seriously about God when you're doing something as frothy as Gilbert and Sullivan? Well, I don't know. I mean, you know, laughter is a very, very great gift from God. There wouldn't be any theatre, any music, any Gilbert and Sullivan if it wasn't for him. <laughs> Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gifts of music and theatre, for the enjoyment they bring both to those performing and those watching. We thank you for human creativity, for music that transcends speech, expressing mysteries that words cannot, and uniting people throughout your world in fellowship and harmony. We thank you for opportunities to use the gifts you have given us for the pleasure of others, and pray we will do this not for our own glory, but for the magnification of your holy name. Amen. Well, we've had the quality of singing here in Buxton this week, but next week we have the quantity. Nearly 40,000 people singing their hearts out on our return visit to Goodison Park, the home of Everton Football Club, when Roger Roy will be meeting some of the people who helped to make our songs of praise there, one of the greatest musical events in the Northwest this year. But from all of us here in Buxton at the Gilbert and Sullivan Festival, hallelujah and goodbye. <laughs>